Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 8 of the video series where I'm going over all the different plugins put out by Topaz Labs. In this episode, we're going to continue our look at Topaz Remask 5. Now, those of you that didn't already see it, I strongly suggest that you watch episode 7 before you watch this episode. In episode 7 we did an introduction to Remask 5 and I went over the workspace and the basic tools in Remask 5 and we did some basic operations in Remask 5. We specifically took a sky out of one image and put in a different sky. Now in this episode we're going to look some of the look at some of the more advanced features in Remask 5. And to begin with we're going to take this image of the model. She's on a white background and we're going to get rid of that white background and have her uh, dropped into this scene, this like living room. So what we're going to do, we're in uh, Adobe Photoshop CC 2015. Make sure that the active layer is the layer with the model. We're going to go up to Filter, Topaz Labs, and then down to Remask 5. And it just takes a second to open, and it's going to come up with this getting started with Topaz Remask screen. If you don't want to see that ever again, just click this little checkbox right there, then click Skip, and that one should never show up again. Now, as I mentioned in Episode 7, we went over the basic tools. I'm not going to go over that again, but we're going to use a basic tool to begin with on this image. Specifically, we have this primary brush, and we have green, that stuff we're going to keep, red, that's stuff we're going to get rid of, and blue, that's where we're telling Topaz Remask to calculate, to look at it very closely and figure out what should stay and what should go. And we're going to start out with the blue brush. And we're just going to go along the edge of our model here. And just, just because this is where we want her clipped out, right around the edge here. Now, she has big hair, and it's a little bit fly away, and that's why I picked it, because we're going to use some of the advanced tools in Remask to help us cut her out, including her hair. Now, as you can see, she's got all this kind of fly away hair down there. So we're going to do our best to get all the little fly away strands. The one thing I got to say is where a lot of people get frustrated with any type of masking or compositing is they expect to get every single hair, um, you know, cut away. And it doesn't work that way. You just want to do it so it looks realistic. So you're not going to get every single hair usually. So, you know, you have to really just make it look like it, it looks real and you not worry about every single strand or you'll really be wasting a lot of time. Now, there's a lot of little gaps in her hair here. So I'm going to be painting in those gaps like this because we really need uh, Topaz to look closely at these gaps and to make sure that uh, the hair stay and the um, background that it, behind the hair uh, goes away. So we have, I think I'm pretty satisfied with our blue brush. So now we're just going to fill the entire white background in in red. So we're going to get our red fill bucket and we're just going to click there. So we have green, that's the part we're definitely keeping. Blue is what we're telling the program to look closely at and figure out what should stay and what should go. And then we have red, which is definitely what we're getting rid of. And we're going to just click on Compute Mask and it will take a second or two. You can see we have this little like clock symbol or watch symbol. And there is our mask. Now we're going to go over to this keep view right here at the top. And we're going to look a little closer at our mask. So I'm going to zoom in. And to zoom in on my Mac, I hit Command Plus. If you have a PC, you would hit Control Plus. Now I'm going to drag the image about. So I'm going to hold the space bar in. And you can see the cursor turns into a little hand. So we could drag it around. Now you can see it did okay. It has a lot of the hairs, but it didn't totally get rid of the background. You can see where the checkerboard is where the background is totally gone, but we have faded checkerboard here and no checkerboard there. So we need to do something to improve this uh, mask. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the color range brush. Now we didn't use this last time. There are 
are two different color range brushes, green and red. Green is what we're keeping, red is what we're going to get rid of. Now I think we're going to get rid of the background instead of painting to keep the hair. We're going to paint to get rid of the background. I think it would be easier on this image. So I'm going to click on the red brush. And you can see we have this little red eyedropper. That's prompting us to take a sample. So we're going to sample like right there. Now it turns into a brush. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint. And you can see how it's painting away that white background. Now we're going to sample there. And we're going to paint there. And it did a nice job there. Let's do over here. And it did a nice job there, maybe right in there, if I could click there very carefully. Yep, did a pretty good job there. Now, in here, it looks like the hair is thick enough where it should be blocking the background, but we see some checkerboard there. So I'm going to use the green brush. I'll try that. And we're going to click right there on the hair. We have this green eyedropper now. And then we're going to brush right in there and see how that comes out. And that improved quite a bit too. So you can see, uh, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through every single strand of hair here, but you get the idea of what you need to do. You need to go around the edges and use the green brush on the parts of the hair that are looking a little transparent that you need to keep. And you're going to use the red brush on parts of the background that are still coming through that white background. Now I'm going to zoom in a little more and hit Command Plus again. Be again, Control Plus on your PC. And I see I have an issue on her shoulder. You can see how um, it's a little bit transparent. So I'm going to take a sample of her skin tone right there. We're on the green brush. And then I'm just going to get a little bit of a smaller brush. And we're just going to paint on her shoulder and see if I could make her shoulder a little more solid. We're going to do it again. Sometimes you've got to do this a little more. And then sometimes if you're doing it over and over and it's really not working, you're going to have to move this slider. This is the color range. And when it's to the left, we have a very narrow color range that the brush is sampling. If you move it to the right, it's going to get a wider color range. Now, the danger of moving it too far to the right, you might, let's say your, um, you know, your background wasn't just totally white like I had here. Let's say it was gray. If you get too much, too wide, you have this too big of a sample and you want to get rid of this gray background and you click on it, you might get rid of some of her skin too or maybe some of her hair because it's just uh, too uh, wide of a color range. So you might have to play around with this slider to get it just right. Um, usually you could go pretty high in my, you know, dealings with it. It really doesn't, um, it does a decent job is what I'm trying to say. So we'll just keep going around. We have a little bit of a transparency here. And we'll look at the, her dress, looks pretty decent. Yeah, a little bit of transparency there, I believe. Make that a little darker. Okay, now it isn't perfect because I'm not going to take the time to zoom back out. I'm going to hit uh, Command-0. So we're zoomed out, but it, it's decent. I could still see I could use some work up in here, but I'm not going to take the time to do that now or this video would be very long. To do a really good mask, to do a really good composite, you really need patience. And you have to know that you're not going to get every single hair. You have to kind of accept that ahead of time. J but you have to just do it so you do the best job possible. So I'm pretty happy with this for this real quick um, demonstration. So I'm going to click OK. And what it does, as I mentioned, it brings it back into Photoshop. And we now have the mask there. And I'm going to turn off this layer. And you can see there's our model in the background. Now you can see right in here it didn't come out too well. I didn't bother working over there, but I did work over in here, and it looks decent. We could move her around in the scene. It's not too bad, but that gives you an idea of how you would use this uh, more advanced tools to get a better cutout, especially when you have like a model with a lot of flyaway hair like this. Now, 
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do this image here. And this has a transparency in it. You can see the bride's veil. And what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, get rid of that black background, and we're going to have this uh, sky behind her. All right, so make sure we're on the layer with the, um, with the model in this case, the part we're going to actually cut out. We're going to go to Filter, Topaz Labs, and Remask 5. Now, this one should be relatively easy to tell you the truth. We're going to start out with the primary brush again. We're going to go to the blue, and we're going to go down the edge of her veil. Just like this. Now, I'm using a Topaz Intuos Pro tablet. I strongly recommend you guys uh, use one, and I will be doing a video on it. I'm getting tons of requests to do a video on the tablet and how I use it at least. So I will be doing a video someday on that. So we have that edge done. All right. But you know what? I really want to do her veil too. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the edge of her face. And you'll see what we're doing in a minute here. Now, the transparencies are kind of touch and go, I found, with Topaz Labs. Sometimes they work brilliantly, but then sometimes they fail miserably. And hopefully, this one will not fail miserably. Try to get that in there, too. All right, so let's paint that right like that. There we go. Okay, so we have this outline here. What we want to do now is we want to do some fills. We want to get rid of this black background, so we're going to get to the red fill, and we're going to paint there so that's red. We want Topaz Labs Remask 5 to think real hard about this transparent or translucent, I think is a more accurate term, veil. So we're going to click there. And, of course, we're keeping the bride. So we're going to click Compute Mask. And there's our mask. Now you could just see it kind of did a pretty decent job. So we're going to look at the keep part, and you could see it's okay. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to the transparency brush to try to improve this. And you can see it's got like a foreground color and a background color. The foreground color is what we're keeping. That's our green part of the brush. The background part is the part we're getting away, getting rid of, I'm sorry, that's the red part of the brush. When you first turn on the brush, it's going to have a dropper and it's going to have the green dropper active. So what you want to do is you need to like pick a part or pick a color that you're keeping. And because it's transparency, it's kind of difficult. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to like um, folds in her veil are a little darker than the um, sheer part of the veil. So I'm going to click there to get a sample. You can see that might not be such a great sample. We'll see. Now for the next click, it turned into the red dropper right away. And we're, we know this is black back here. So we're going to click there. And you can see that's black. Now it turned into a brush. And we're going to get a bigger brush. What we're going to do, what I found with this, is you have to be very careful. It doesn't have like masking like uh, Lightroom does or the Lightroom brush where it has masking. If I accidentally brush on these flowers, it sometimes will screw it up. So you got to be very careful and just brush on the part you want to improve. Like we want to improve the mask right in there. And let it calculate a little bit. See how it does. And it improved it marginally, but it improved it. Now it's back, you know, to a sample, um, you know, uh, dropper. So we're going to again click on something that is pretty white, and again click on something that is pretty black, and we'll see if we can make it even a little better. What I found is if you do it too much, you tend to ruin it. And see how that does. And, yeah, it kind of ruined it, if you ask me. But, anyways, let's see how that looks. We're going to click OK. And we're going to turn off this layer. And it didn't do too bad. You could see I, I purposely picked a background with a very, you know, strong color. 
So they, you could see it behind the veil. And you could see it. It looks pretty good. And this had some um, land it's silhouetted at the bottom. And you could see that's showing through uh, our bride's veil very nicely. So it did a it did a nice job. I mean, it really did. So that is episode eight. Uh, we went through a couple of the more advanced features of Remask 5. And I think that's it for Remask. If you guys have any questions, you could always feel free to uh, ask them to me. I'll do my best to answer them. One thing, if you ask me through YouTube, like you post below, I don't always see those. I have like almost 400 videos on YouTube, so I miss a lot of those questions. So you're better off emailing me personally and giving me a few days to answer, okay? Uh, Tony at anthonymorganti.com. All right, I hope that helps uh, you guys that want to use Topaz Remask 5. All right, I'd like to thank everyone who watches my videos. I'll talk to you guys soon.